Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, let me thank the International Institute for Environment and Development for inviting me to speak at the 10th International Conference on Community-Based Adaptation. And let me congratulate you all for hitting the 10-year milestone. For more than a decade, this conference has played an integral role in empowering communities to meet one of our greatest challenges, climate change. Over this 10-year period, I have been glad to see the climate change discussion focus more and more on the urgent need to help people adapt to the impacts built into the planet's atmosphere, in particular the poor, the most vulnerable, women and children and those in developing countries. This shift in focus is evident in the science with the IPCC's fifth assessment report detailing global vulnerability. It is evident in the many commitments by cities and regions to invest in resilient infrastructure that best serves the growing populations. And it is evident in the Paris Agreement, where adaptation is elevated to the same level as mitigation. Explicit goals are set forth to limit warming and the rights of all people are explicitly linked to the urgent need to act on climate change. This is your first conference following the adoption of the new historic Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. I certainly hope that these agreements have guided your conversations and conference. This year, in the Climate Talks, governments will hold a series of events that will advance the adaptation agenda. The first technical expert meetings on adaptation will be held in May. The Secretariat will organize an event on implementing the nationally determined contributions, many of which include adaptation goals. The GEF will hold an event on capacity for transparency, and the French Presidency will undertake informal consultations on vulnerability, especially in Africa. The outcomes of CBA 10 can and must be part of the dialogue that will flow into those events. We must not lose sight of why we must focus on enabling effective adaptation practices and policies. We must not lose sight of the vulnerable communities, urban and rural, that stand to benefit. The Paris Agreement has given us a great opportunity to invest in resilient communities, communities that will grow powered by cleaner energy and develop guided by greener principles. We must seize this opportunity together and deliver the suite of policies that create new industries and new jobs, safeguard valuable natural capital and keep the economy moving in the face of impacts. Dear friends, this year, governments will begin implementing the Paris Agreement with the explicit goal of limiting warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius and keeping warming in the 1.5 degree range. We know that even in this range, communities will be affected. Today, I challenge you to work with governments to help them understand what impacts will confront communities without action at sufficient speed and scale to achieve the 1.5 degree limit. And I urge you to continue your crucial work preparing communities for the future. I also urge you to look at your work through the lens of the Paris Agreement. The pipeline of capacity building you have established is creating leaders and champions of tomorrow. These are the leaders that can and must seize the Paris opportunity. The opportunity is here, the challenge is clear, and the moment is now. Together, we can and must make the most of this moment, not for those who adopted the Paris Agreement, but for those who must benefit the billions of people alive today and the billions coming in future generations. Thank you.